good morning students in the last class we have discussed about a detailed aspect about the cell now we shall move on to the next part in the level of organization in all the living organism is tissues so as we know uh, whatever the organism which is there on this planet earth is going to form in different level of organization so first it has developed from the cells next level is tissues next is the organ next is the organ system and finally the organism is going to be formed so today we shall discuss about the second level of organization in all the living organisms is tissues so in the tissues we have two categories one is the plant tissues another one is the animal tissues so first we shall concentrate on the plant tissues first first of all we shall see what actually the meaning of tissues so tissues are nothing but the group of cells which have common origin and performing similar function so we call them as tissues so tissues are nothing but as i told it's a second level of organization where it has to form from the basic unit of life which is known as the cells so all the cells put together will have a common origin and they are going to perform certain activities in the organism's body and we call those group of cells as what we call tissues now the word tissue was first coined by the scientists by chart in the year 1792 so when we discuss about the cells I have told that there is a branch in the biology that has been arise because of the development of the cells and we call them as cytology in the same manner after the development of the tissues again there is a new branch of biology has set up and that particular branch is known as what we call histology and for that word histology first coined by the scientist mayer in 1819 now as we know how the cells are very much important for our body we know that one in the same manner we shall look into the importance of tissues why tissues are very much important Even though the cells are there in the body what is the use of these tissues let me see now yes what tissues will do in our body tissues bring about the division of labor in the organisms it is going to bring about certain activities so whatever the activities are performing in our body so each activity is under the influence of what we call tissues tissues are going to perform certain activities and at certain uh, level tissues are performing certain activities in our body though the cells are present next importance is that tissues are responsible for the organization of organs as well as organ systems and even when the tissues are there the workload of each cell has been decreased because if when the cell is performing certain activities when the tissues are formed later onwards we know that cells activity is somewhat it is being reduced and that has been given rise to the tissues so workload of the individual cells has become decreased by the by the development of these tissues in our body another important is that because of improved organization and higher efficiency multicellular organisms have higher survival which means we have last we are actually higher survival means long lasting life is there in the multicellular organisms because of this development of this tissues okay now next important thing as i told in the tissues when you look into this as we know in this planet earth there are two important creatures one is the plant another one is the animals so tissues are present both in plants as well as in animals so now the question comes to your mind is the plants and animals are made up of same type of tissues no so plants and animals are not made up of same type of tissues because they are different let us see now yes so plants and animals are not made up of same type of tissues because as we know plants is separate unity and animals are separate entity in the nature certain differences are there between the plants and animals in the respect of organization in the mode of living in the mode of lifestyle even though both the organisms will have certain similar life processes activities but the organization lifestyle will differ so because of this reason there is no type of tissue similar in both plants and animals and entirely they are different type of tissues which is and those type different types of tissues are discussed in this chapter in detail in the next coming uh, sessions now let us see the differences between the plants and animal tissue as i told there are certain differences are there between plants and animal tissues let us see what are those differences in plant tissues 
dead tissues are more abundant whereas in animal tissues living tissues are more abundant plant tissues energy utilization is less in animal tissues energy utilization is more so in plant tissues the organization is very simple in animal tissues organization is complex because there is a development of organs and organ system and tissue organization in case of plant tissues is stationary whereas in animal tissues the tissue organization is in high mobility so there are all certain differences we can quote between the plant tissues and the animal tissues so much more things we are going to discuss in the coming sessions so that i have not touched certain topics because uh, mainly i have told the basic differences between plants and animal tissues so later onwards we come to know that what actually the other differences we have there between the plant and animal tissues in the further sessions now coming to the first plant tissues the plant tissues are classified into different types based on different parameters now let us look into those parameters on which the plant tissues are classified yes now the plant tissues are classified into two major types one is called as meristematic cells another one is called as permanent cells or meristematic tissues or permanent tissues so meristematic cells is nothing but they are the type of cells which have the ability to divide and once the division will stop the tissue will become dead and they become the permanent tissues this is how we can differentiate between meristematic and permanent meristematic is actually derived from the word meristem which means they are the living cells they have the ability to divide and divide and later on once the division stops it becomes a permanent tissues so now these meristematic tissues depending upon their location in the plants it has been classified into further three groups that is apical meristematic tissue intercalary meristematic tissue and lateral meristematic tissue now again the permanent tissues are again broadly divided into two major categories that is simple permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue so what is a simple and complex we'll discuss later simple permanent means they are the permanent tissues which consist of simple cells which are made up of only single layer of cells or which consist of only living cells whereas complex permanent tissues are consisting of both living cells and dead cells and even the organization of cells are totally different when compared to the simple permanent cells now the simple permanent cells are further divided into parenchyma colenchyma and sclerenchyma complex permanent tissues are again further divided into xylem and phloem so in this way the entire plant tissues can be classified into different types so you can see here the flow chart how it is being classified now as i told this meristematic tissues so what are the features of this meristematic tissues as i told so meristematic tissues are actually derived from the word meristem and these cells are actually immature cells and they have the potential to divide and form the new cells so wherever these meristematic cells are present in the plants which is responsible for the growth of the plant body the plants is growing the plants is going to see certain growing regions because they have these cells which are called as the meristematic cells so when the meristematic cells are observed under the microscope you can see the cells like this this is the shape of the meristematic cells now coming to the features of meristematic cells once it is observed under the microscope what are the features you can able to notify number 1 the cells are small in shape spherical or it may be polygonal it may vary sometimes it may be spherical sometimes it may be polygonal in certain parts of the plant body as we know the cells are compactly arranged with a thin cell wall the cells cannot have any gaps in between the cells are compactly arranged or in other words are tightly packed and the, all the cell the cell wall of these cells will have thin cell wall and we don't find any intercellular spaces between the cells the nucleus is present it is very large and cytoplasm is dense the vacuoles are absent or it might be if it is present it is very small the cells has the ability to grow and divide repeatedly that is a feature of meristematic cells so these are all the features what i quoted now now let us come to the functions of meristematic cells what are the functions of meristematic cells number 1 meristematic cells take part in the growth by the formation of new cells meristematic cells helps in the production of a new leaves stem branches flowers fruits root hairs and root branches 
they also plays in the formation of new cells whenever there is some injury takes place in the cells of the plants in that place a new cells are going to arise because of this mesomatic cells now the very important part is we should look into the location of meristematic cells so depending upon the location as i told in the flow chart it has been classified into three groups that is apical intercalary and lateral so in these things what we have to understand here is we should just look into its location where actually it is present in the plant and what actually it will do in the plant body that we have to see now let us come to the first important thing now first we shall look into the apical meristematic cells where do we find this apical meristematic cells it is present at the growing tips of the stem and the roots we can see in the tip of the stem and the tip of the root we see this apical meristematic cells and these are responsible for the growth as in length of root as well as the stem you can look into the image of the apical meristem here in the tip of the region we can see the apical meristematic cells which are responsible for the entire growth of the plant body in the similar way we look into the another important type of the meristematic cells which are referred as intercalary and lateral intercalary meristematic cells again they are present at the base of the leaves base of the internodes or below the nodes it also helps in growth of the leaves and internodes lateral meristem again it is present on the side both in stem as well as the root and they are mainly responsible for the girth of the stem and the root what's the meaning of this girth so lateral meristematic tissue is mainly responsible for expanding the stem portion of the plant body so from the uh, seedlings we can able to see the uh, large big trees that is because of the development of this lateral meristematic we look into the seedlings the stem is very thin as the plant grows the diameter of the plant is also goes on increasing and that is diameter in other words we call them as here girth so that girth is being increased because of the presence of lateral meristematic cells you can see the picture here once again where we can see the intercalary meristem that is the base of the leaves and lateral meristem can be seen on the side of the root as well as the stem next as i told now these meristematic cells once it lost the ability to divide it becomes what we call the permanent cells and thereby it attains a permanent shape and size as well as a permanent function and that particular process is known as what we call differentiation now this permanent tissues again it is classified as simple as well as complex now what are the features of this permanent tissues let's see now again the cells of these permanent tissues may be contain living cells or it may contain dead cells both it can have in the permanent tissues because they have lost the ability to divide means the cell will become die and sometimes there are certain cells in these tissues which can also have the ability to divide so that we can say both living as well as dead so these permanent cells do not divide another important thing they have thick or thin cell wall they do not have a definite functions the cells have attained a definite shape and size which do not alter afterwards now let us look into the differences between these meristematic cells and the permanent cells once we recall once again we summarize the differences now so that we can understand what we have so far discussed now meristematic cells are small they are undifferentiated because they have the ability to divide permanent cells are large and they are differentiated with different shapes in meristematic tissue there is no intercellular spaces but in permanent tissue intercellular spaces are present in meristematic cells the cell wall is thin in permanent tissue the cell wall is thick or thin in meristematic tissue the cells are living in permanent tissue the cells may be living or dead in meristematic tissue the cells undergo division whereas in permanent tissue the cells will not divide next we shall look into now simple permanent tissues now as i told simple permanent tissues are of three types which are classified based on their structure origin and function those three types of simple permanent tissues are parenchyma colenchyma and sclerenchyma now look into this parenchyma tissue parenchyma tissue is a very simple permanent tissue which we see in the plant body its cell wall is thin and it is the most abundant tissue in the plants when you look into these cells in the microscope the cells are polygonal in shape and they are spherical in nature as i told the cell wall is made up of a particular substance which is known as cellulose and the cells are loosely packed with large intercellular spaces nucleus and dense cytoplasm is present 
Now you can see the microscopic view of the parenchyma cells. When you look into the cells under the microscope, you can able to see the cells like this. As I told, the cells are compactly arranged. Okay, they have less intercellular spaces. It means uh, less in the sense uh, they have more intercellular spaces can be seen. Sorry, it has got more intercellular spaces with what we can see the cell wall is thin and dense cytoplasm and nucleus can be able to identify it here. This is another important image of the parenchyma cells. Now, where actually we see this parenchyma cells in the plants? It is present in all the parts of the plants like root, leaf, flowers, fruits, etc. Even in the mesophyll of the leaves also contain this parenchyma. Now, what are the functions of parenchyma? It stores food and water. It provides support and turgidity to the softer parts of the plant. It helps in gaseous exchange. It stores waste products like tannins, resins, gums, etc. Now coming to the types of parenchyma. Again in parenchyma, we have different types are there. Let us see the first one. That is chlorenchyma. Another one is aerenchyma. As the name indicates, chlorenchyma. Chlorenchyma is type of a parenchyma which contains chloroplast. And they are present in the mesophyll cells. And they are actually responsible for the process of photosynthesis. Another type of parenchyma is aerenchyma. So aerenchyma is another type of parenchyma cells which are actually having air spaces between them. And they are present in hydrophytes. So because of the presence of air cavities, this particular tissue is referred as what we call aerenchyma. It mainly present in the water plants and it is mainly providing buoyancy to the aquatic plants. Now, what is this image that you are seeing here? This is none other than the next important issue is known as colonchyma. Now, what are the features of colonchyma? It is different to parenchyma. As I told, parenchyma, we can say the cells are loosely arranged with intercellular spaces, cell wall is thin and everything. But that is totally different in colonchyma cells. You can see the colonchyma is another simple permanent tissue, no doubt, but it has got thick cell wall and they have less intercellular spaces. Wherever the cells are going to join, they form what we call thick, corner, thick corners. And because of the production of a substance called as lignin, the cells of this uh, tissue may be elongated, oval or circular in nature. You can look into this parent colenchyma cells here and the transverse section. Now, where is the location of this cells? It can occur below the epidermis in the leaf stalk, leaf midrib. And its function is it provides a mechanical strength as well as flexibility. It also helps in glow growth. It also stores the food and also takes part in photosynthesis. Yes, now another important tissue what we see in the plants is chlorenchyma. Now this is also another important tissue, but it is considered to be as a dead mechanical tissue. It only helps in supporting the plant body and it, here the cells are lost the ability to divide and becomes a dead cells. And all the dead cells are joined and form this chlorenchyma cells in the form of a tube-like structure. And it is again a thick walled in nature because of the presence of cellulose. And they have a narrow lumen cavity is present in the middle. And this thicker cell wall is because of the presence of lignin, cellulose, hemicellulose, etc. This is a st uh, structure of chlorenchyma when you observe under the microscope. That is what I told in the center. There is a cavity is present which is known as lumen and this is actually present in the form of a tube-like structure. Yes, now again in chlorenchyma, there are two types are there. One is called as a fibers, another one is called as a sclerids. The type of the sclerenchyma which are long and narrow cells and which are occur in sheets <coughs> are called as fibers and those sclerenchyma tissue which are short and highly thick walled cells and occurs in single and we call those as referred as what we call stone cells. So sclerenchyma is of two types one is the fiber another one is the sclerids. Sclerids are also known as stone cells. Fibers are long narrow cells and they are occur in sheets whereas sclerids are short they are thick walled cells and they occur in single. Now, there is another important tissue present in the plant body 
which is known as epidermal tissue. Now this epidermal tissue is actually acting as an outer covering tissue. It actually present in the outer layer of the plant body. The entire plant body is covered by this particular tissue known as the epidermal tissue. Here also the cells are closely packed without having any intercellular spaces. Now this epidermal tissue is made up of a waxy layer called cuticle which is made up of a substance called cutin. Now the very important thing what you have to identify here is this particular epidermal tissue is going to be modified into different parts depending upon their functions. Basically it is involving in the function of protection. It is mainly protect the plant body from the mechanical injuries. But in certain occasions the epidermal tissue is going to be modified into various parts like stomata, epiploma cells depending on the functions. So you can see one such image of the epidermis which is known as the stomata cells which has been modified depending upon their activity which is uh, when, when the epidermal tissues are in the form of stomata it is mainly responsible for the exchange of gases when the epidermal tissue are in the form of epiploma cells they help in the absorption of the water so like this depending upon the function the epidermal tissue are being modified now this is another important protective tissue what we see in the plant body and this image what you are seeing is none other than bark tissue or it is also referred as cork tissue. So this is also outer tissue which we see in the old stems and the roots. Here the cells are arranged compactly in several layers. Intercellular spaces are absent. The cell wall of this particular tissue is made up of a particular substance which is known as suberin and these cells are moreover rectangular in shape. Now what are the functions of this protective tissue? As we know, first of all, as the name indicates, they help in protection of course. They also check the water loss from the plants. They regulate the exchange of gases. They take part in the absorption of water and minerals in plants. They also act as insulator by providing protection against the injuries and extreme temperature. Now let us move on to the next category of the tissues which are called as complex permanent tissues as I told in the beginning. Complex permanent tissues are those type of permanent tissues where the cells are having both living and dead cells or in other words the cells are made up of more than one layer of cells. These tissues are mainly responsible for the transportation in plants and that is why the complex permanent tissues are of two types one is xylem and phloem. I think you know about the xylem and phloem in the lower classes. Yes, xylem and phloem are together referred as a complex permanent tissue, mainly they are responsible for transportation and so they are also called as vascular tissues. Now first important tissue under complex is xylem. Xylem is another important complex permanent tissue as we know it is mainly responsible for the transportation of the plants, sorry, transportation of water and minerals in plants. So they are called as water conducting tissue. Now, xylem is made up of four different type of cells which are called as xylem parenchyma, xylem trachytes, xylem vessels and xylem fibers. Put together we call them as xylem tissue. Xylem tissue is mainly made up of these four different type of cells. That's why it's coming under the category of complex permanent tissue because they are made up of four different cells in that certain living cells are there and some are dead cells are there. But here xylem parenchyma is the only one living cell present in the xylem tissue but xylem trachytes, xylem vessels and xylem fibers are considered as a dead tissues. We can see here certain cells of the xylem which are called as xylem fiber, xylem trachytes, xylem vessels you can see here. Now these are all the other four important parts, uh, sorry, components of the cells of the xylem as I already, uh, we, we already witnessed now. This is another image of the xylem tissues. Now let us look into the function of each cell now. Xylem parenchyma, as I told, it is the only living cell present in the xylem tissue. It is mainly responsible for storing the food. Xylem trachytes, it is actually in the form of a long tubular dead cells, which are made up of lignified uh, lignin material. The wall is very thick and they have a wide lumen. You can see the second, uh, this one. Uh, second picture of that one in the image and here they are responsible for the movement of water from one part to the another. The third image what you are seeing is the xylem vessels. They are also a long tube in nature. They are joined end to end by dead cells. They also help in the conduction of water. Another important image what you see here is xylem fibers responsible for mechanical strength. 
Next important tissue is phloem. Phloem is another important complex permanent tissue which are responsible for the transportation of the food in the plant. So that is why it is referred as food conducting tissue. In a similar way, phloem is also made up of four different cells that is phloem parenchyma, phloem fibers, pseudotubes and companion cells. Among the four cells, phloem parenchyma, companion cells are called as living cells and phloem fibers and the pseudotubes are considered to be as dead cells. This is an image of the phloem tissue. Now let us look into the structure of this phloem tissue with all the four components. As we know, the phloem parenchyma, as the name indicates, they are responsible for the conduction of the food as well as storing of the food. They are living cells, as, as I told already, and they have thin cell wall. Phloem fibers is also helps in providing mechanical strength. It is a dead cell actually. Sew tubes, once again, they are elongated living tubes which have some perforated plate-like structures which are called as sieve plates and through that they pass the food materials. Because of the presence of sieve plates, they are called as sieve tubes. We have one more important cells here which is called as companion cells. These cells are always present together with the sieve tubes. Adjacent to the sieve tube, there is a cell called as a companion cell which are considered to be as once again the living cell and they are also responsible for the conduction of food. So all the cells of the phloem responsible for conduction of food, all the cells of xylem helps for conduction of water and minerals. With this, we discuss about the detail of the plant tissues. In the next session, we discuss with the animal tissues. Till then, bye, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you.